Everybody, we thank God for yet wonderful morning that God has enabled us to see this wonderful day. It's an opportunity for us to have the gift of life freely given unto us. We have not paid anything for it, but God is merciful and gracious to help us objectively see this day that he has made single-handedly, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord, because David said in his presence, there is fullness of joy, and on his right hand are pleasures forevermore. I would rather be in the house of God than dwell in the tent of wickedness. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tent of wickedness wickedness. You may have friends, but God is the only person who can stand with you at all times. This morning, God has prepared for us something that he wants us to get from him. He is ministering unto us from the book of uh, Numbers chapter 13, verses 17 to 20, and we shall also read verses 26 to 32. I will read from the King James Version. The Bible says, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way southward, and go up to into the mountain, and see the land what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they that dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be far or lean, whether there be good wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was in the time of the first tribe's grapes. Verses 26 to 32 says, And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, into the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation, and shewed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. But the men that went up with them said, We be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Hallelujah. In the text that we have read, we see that faith pleases God and God has a desire to have a relationship with us. Faith is heavenly, currents of tread. The, the, the currency that heaven understands is faith. It is what we use to exchange with the things that are not seen by our naked eyes, but they are seen by our spiritual eyes. We feel them, we believe it, and at the end we get to have it because we have faith and we have applied faith upon it and God is happy about it. As the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We see that God has a plan for us. His relationship with each one of us is objective. God does not waste resources. And so his work is never without a cause. When he forms you in your mother's womb, there is a plan that God has for you and he begins immediately by making sure he chooses the parents for you. He chooses where you are going to be born, the country, the continent, the environment that you are going to be brought up because all these bring up or sum up what becomes of you in the end that God has planned for you. We see that he created us with a reason and a certain purpose. He expects us to behold 
and have a closer walk with him through salvation. God does not just pop up from anywhere. But God shows up and tells you that he wants you to be born again. He wants you to be born again of water and of the spirit so that you, you don't serve God as the Samaritans, the way they served him. In the book of John chapter 4, God had to make it clear to the Samaritan woman that a time is coming that you are going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. God wants you to be born again of water and of the spirit. He wants you to repent, to be, uh, to be baptized in the name of Jesus. He wants you to receive the infilling of the power of the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. When you, when you receive the infilling of the power of the Holy Ghost, you are able to understand, to decipher the spiritual matters so that when God speaks you, you are able to understand what God is saying. You are able to differentiate your own mind. You are able to differentiate the voices of people and you are able to connect with your Lord and Savior because you understand him when he speaks spiritually. Because the carnal mind cannot understand spiritual matters, but the spiritual mind, a mind that has been circumcised, can be able to understand spiritual matters. Hallelujah. And so in order for you to walk with God, you need to have a conversation with him daily so that you talk to him and he talks back at you and you will realize there are things about God you cannot understand with your carnal mind. Mary asked, how shall it be when the angel Gabriel told her that she was going to have a child and this was going to become the son of God that is going to redeem mankind. The son that she was going to have was supposed to be brought forth by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so we get to understand that God handpicks each one of us because he desires to have a relationship with each one of us. When he has a relationship with you, God starts revealing to you the plans that he has for you. He starts giving you things at a glance for you to understand the things that he has in store for you. And there are things to make you feel good. There are things to give you hope. There are things to give you a future. There are things that make you appreciate your relationship with him. We serve a mighty God. We serve a loving God who has so many goodies that he wants to present in your life. Hallelujah. But in order for you to understand him, in order for you to understand the purpose of the gifts, the purpose of the goodies, the purpose of the blessings in your life, and for you also to understand why there's a certain blessing he gives you, but he doesn't give you a sister. There's a certain blessing that he brings upon your home, upon your marriage, but not any other marriage around you. It is because there is a definite plan for each and every act in your life. Hallelujah. And the only way to decipher it, for you to be able to comprehend it, you need to understand spiritual matters and it has to be by the filling of the power of the Holy Ghost. God desires that you fast, that you trust him because there are many things he needs to show you. How will you understand it is only when you get to understand the mind of God. The foundation of our salvation is faith. Jesus kept on saying, only believe. Your faith has healed you. He told the woman with the issue of blood, your faith has healed you. Hallelujah. Because the currency that, you, that coexists between us and heaven is faith. It is impossible to please the Lord if you do not apply faith in your daily life. You cannot believe the things of the person you do not trust. First of all, you need to trust in the Lord. You need to believe in God. That is why he says in Hebrews eleven six, and without faith it is impossible to please him. And he that cometh to him must first of all believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He reward those who, those who diligently show up, communicate with him and do things according to his will and not according to their will. When they please him that way, they are following him even when they don't understand everything about the relationship, everything about God, but they have given themselves to understanding God bit by bit. They have given themselves to do things even when they don't understand because they have come to believe that there are things about God you can never 
understand before you begin the race. You can only understand after you start walking with him. Because with God, it's about the journey. A journey with, with Christ normally gives birth to so many things that goes beyond the scripture that you normally read. There has to be a clear distinction between somebody who just reads the word and that person who normally applies the word, leaves the word. Because when you start walking the journey, there are so many things that will be expounded from the scripture. You will come to understand what it means to fast, what it means to pray, and the fruits of prayer, the fruits of tithing, the fruits of offering uh, sacrifices unto God. God draws you near by doing for you many good things. When you read the book of Romans chapter 2 verses 4, it tells us, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth to repentance. Hallelujah. Many of us normally take it for granted. They just assume that since God gave me money, I can use it the way I want. Since God gave me children, I can lead them, I can train them the way I want, I can bring them up the way I want. Since God has enabled me to work in a certain place, I can live the way I want. Since God has led me to be able to go to a certain place, I can do whatever I want. God is very objectionable. That is what you need to understand as a child of God. When God sends you there, somewhere there is a mission. When God uplifts you to a certain level, there is a mission that God wants you to accomplish at that level. When God gives you a certain amount of money that enables you to live at a certain place, go to certain areas, the accomplishments in those areas, when God pushes you to live in a certain area, they are accomplishment that, that God wants you to make. Hallelujah. Because you have a limited time on the face of this earth. After a certain duration, child of God, if God tarries, you are going to die. And the question will be, what did you do with your life that God gave you? What did you do with the resources that God gave you? What did you do with the children that God gave you? What did you do with the wife, with the spouse that God gave you? What did you do with the position in the society that God gave you? Did you reach out to people to be born again? Did you reach out to your cousins? Did you reach out to fellow brethren? Did you reach out to your neighbors? God expects you to utilize your resources well because time is of the essence and we have no time. The devil is moving around like a roaring lion looking for whom to, de looking for whom to devour. But God is looking for people who have faith. Faith to conquer mountains, faith to cross rivers, faith to go through the fire, faith to go through trials, faith that can enable you to trust him, even when what you're going through does not make sense, even when things become tough, you need faith to take you through, because weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. We see that the children of Israel... They were under the umbrella of the Almighty God. These are people that God loved from deep within his heart. These are the chosen people. These are the chosen generation. This is the chosen family that God says, I have consecrated it. I have separated it. I have loved it. These are people that even nations around the world will get salvation through this nation of Israel. And so God decided to show himself before them. He showed himself what he can do. He showed before them the things that he can do in their personal and their daily lives. It is just like when we are trying to woo somebody in, in our lives. We normally show them our good sides. We show them what we can do. We show them our good side. We show them what we can deliver. It is a way of attracting somebody to our relationship and also a way of sustaining them. That if you begin with me this journey this relationship. These are the things I can offer you. And so God started by showing them that he could release plagues against their enemy. Then there was a grand miracle where God himself separated the Red Sea right before their eyes and consumed their enemies. Unfortunately, the mind of a human being normally forgets the good that people have done to him, normally forgets the good that God has done to them when they become comfortable. 
I'm here to tell you, child of God, comfort is good. But when you become too comfortable, chances are very high that there could be a tendency of you laxing. There could be a tendency of you forgetting Calvary. There could be the tendency of you forgetting the fellowship with the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There could be a tendency of you forgetting the power of the blood of Jesus. There could be a tendency of you forgetting the essence of salvation in your life. There could be the essence of you forgetting the importance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in your life. These are people that God moved with them during the day as a pillar of cloud to cover them. He moved with them as a pillar of fire to shield them and also to provide light at night. God did tremendous miracle before these people. He even fed them. They didn't They didn't have to cook. He provided for them. He gave them manna. He gave them quails. But these are people, once they became comfortable with the blessing, they opted to forget the relationship that they had with our Lord and Savior. Child of God, you need to be careful with blessings. Blessings are good. Blessings bring a certain comfort. Blessings encourage you. Blessings make you feel that you can continue this journey with God. But I'm here to tell you, child of God, that if you're not careful, blessings have killed many. Blessings have made many to forget the house of God. Blessings have made, have made some people who are not deeply rooted in the word to become even arrogant with servants of God and treat them as though they are errand boys or small boys. You better be careful when you're handling a blessing because a blessing is fragile. It can either turn you to be a great person in the kingdom or it can turn you to be a villain in the kingdom of God. The children of Israel, after being delivered, God told them that he's taking them to a land of promise, a land of milk and honey. And God revealed himself before them. He did numerous miracles. These were meant for them to understand when, that when God says something, his word does not come back, but until it has accomplished that which it was said to do. But the children of Israel did not understand the power of God. They did not understand the power of the word of God. They didn't understand the power of the words that are spoken by God. They didn't understand that God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. When he says something, it has to come to pass. What God does is that he tells you, child of God, I will bless you. Child of God, I will open doors for you. Child of God, I will make you the head and not the tail. Child of God, I will make you lenders to the nation. Child of God, your bounds shall be full to a point that are going to overflow. Child of God, you need to understand this, that when God gives you promises, they will not always happen at once. They take time because God wants you to graduate to every promise that he gives you. Anytime that you graduate to a certain promise, you get to value it. But when you get something easily, you lose it easily. But when you sweat until you get something, Something, you tend to value it because anytime you see that particular blessing, you simply remember the seven years journey that you had to struggle. The seven years journey that you fasted even for 50 to 60 days. The seven years journey that you would go to the altar in church when everyone has left church when people have not yet come to church early in the morning and you would seek the face of God from that time. You would seek the face of God for hours because there is so Something that you wanted to be birthed out. You need to understand the, that the blessings of God are birthed out. If you don't believe it, you need to you need to talk to Hannah in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2. The Bible says that this lady, it became too much. The desire of having a child became too much to a point that the food that was on the table didn't have much value before her. She chose to separate herself. She chose to consecrate herself to go and seek the face of God. She prayed to a point that even she could not utter words audibly. Her lips were moving because she had told God, I want a child. I want a child. I want a child. This lady moved with unwavering faith. She had been going to Shiloh for so many times, but she kept on going there with faith that is stable. We need to understand that even the man at Bethesda was at the pool for 38 years. He 
He kept on being present there until the day that Jesus visited him. God wanted the children of Israel to have a glimpse of the blessing. God was boasting of what he was going to present to them. That this thing is so great in me that I just want to show it to you a little bit. And so God told Moses, I want you to send spies just to go and see and, and uh, bring a report of what they have seen. I want them to tell the rest of the family of the Israelites the great thing that I have in store for them. Hallelujah. The Bible says that they went and they were able to come back with the sand, with the grapefruits, because it was the season of the harvest of the grapes. And they were able to show that this is what we have brought. Hallelujah. You know that the minds of men are different. The Bible makes us understand that when they came back and they gave the news, they said that the land was good. The land was favorable. The land was fertile. And these are the fruits. They describe the goodness of the land. They describe the goodness of their destiny. They describe the beauty of their destiny. But they also added the impediment that they came across. They said it is full of Jebusites. They said it is full of many tribes. They say that they had also seen the son of Anak. That means that, that they saw giants. And they also added that they appeared to them as grasshoppers. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Child of God need to understand that the blessings of God normally outnumber us. The blessings of God, they are greater than our imagination. Imagination. The blessings of God, they are greater than us. To a point that when he that our barn shall be full until they overflow, it means that his blessings are greater than us, and they are not things that we can easily fathom. He wanted them, he wanted them to understand that yes, this is your destiny. I am taking you there. The only thing I want you to give to me as your God is your faith, unwavering faith, a faith that is stable and not not a faith that is unstable. God trades very well with faith that is stable. And the only faith that God understands is stable faith. That is why when you read the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. This is something that God wanted them to see and this is victory. God wanted them to see victory in this particular blessing. And he didn't, and he didn't want them to have have a wavering faith. There are many things that God has promised you as a child of God. Because the moment you become born again, one of the things that you are going to realize is that there is that feeling in you that you are going to feel of the thing that God is going to plant in you. God will make you understand that even the thing that, that, that you are going through in your own wilderness, they are simply a sign of the greatness of the calling that God has planned along the way. You need to understand, child of God, that the greater the calling, the greater the tribulation, the greater the persecution. Good things are not found easily. Good things are sought after. They are fought for and people shed blood. People shed sweat in order for them to appreciate the value of the thing that lay ahead of them. Hallelujah. The ten came before the children of Israel and gave them a negative report. The Bible makes us understand in chapter 13 and chapter 14 that these people became angry and they wondered why God would remove them from Egypt to come and kill them in the desert. Child of God need to understand that God knows the way. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that he can tell the end from the beginning. And so you ought to trust God. Even when things become come tough, you need to trust him. Along the way to your destiny, let me tell you, child of God, you are going to lose your job, but continue stepping up. You are going to lose your husband, but continue stepping up. You may lose your children through accidents or through sicknesses, but child of God, I'm here to tell you, you need to step up. You may lose even, even your loved ones at a time that you didn't expect, but I'm here to tell you, child of God, you need to soldier on. Your faith may be tested because things are going to happen that you had never seen in your life. But I'm here to tell you that God is still on the throne. And he promised even when you go
go through the waters, when you go through the fire, he is going to be with you. Even, even when friends leave you, child of God, it is okay. When your loved ones leave you, it is okay. You would rather fall in the hands of God. You would rather partner with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he is the giver of our faith. The Bible says that he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Anything that, cons that constitutes faith is in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How will you know him? How will you live without partnering with your Savior, Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. The words that were uttered by the Israelites who believed the negative report made the Lord angry. That is why when you read the book of Numbers chapter 14 from verses 10 it says, But all the congregation bed stoned them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be before they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed them, have shewed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make of thee a greater nation and a mightier than they. Hallelujah. Child of God, there is nothing that displeases your God like lack of faith. Hallelujah. Sometimes you wonder why is it that God comes up with so many rules. Do this. Do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do this. I'm here to tell you that it's not really about God, but it's about you. You are the baby in his arms. You are the one who makes him go into all that trouble of making sure that he plans your life. He plans the problems and the trouble that you are going to go through so that your faith can be perfected, so that your character can be better. And at the end of it, if your relationship is better, child of God, you are going to understand this, that your relationship with men is going to be better because what God teaches you in church is what you are going to apply outside the church and it will make people be attracted to you. So God teaches you how you're going to behave outside. If you are somebody who is unstable in your faith, unstable in your trust, you're going to realize that you're going to be somebody that is always murmuring. You're going to be somebody that always changes like the wind. Today you're moving to the west, to borrow your moment to the east. How effective are you going to be as a church worker if you're somebody who is wavering? If you're somebody who is in consistent. If you're somebody who lacks a sense of direction, the Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 verses 7, for that person must not suppose that a double-minded man unstable in all his ways will receive anything from the Lord. People who lack faith, they are people who are hard to please because most of the time you show them what you can do for them. You show them the doors that you can open for them. You show them what you can shower them. But even after doing all that, it doesn't make sense to them. At the end of it, they choose an opposite direction. It depends on how the heat is. If the heat is too much, they move from one place to the other. They easily leave you. They easily move from one place to the other because they lack a backbone. These are people that do not allow themselves to be planted, to be rooted at a certain place. And so God takes time to teach you. God is this parent that makes sure that he stays with you in the house. He disciplines you. He beats you up whenever you need to be caned. He corrects you whenever you need to be corrected, knowing that he is preparing you for the outside world. Hallelujah. God knows that the devil does not sleep and he is trying to counterattack so that you do not make it to your destiny. But how will you be able to stand if you do not learn how to put your faith unto God? Because many afflictions will come your way. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him from them all. Psalms 34, 19. Hallelujah. Isaiah 3, 10. Tell the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the good of the land. Child of God, I'm here to tell you that the journey of salvation is full of rocks, is full of many troublesome moments. 
Doesn't mean that we don't have good moments. But after a certain duration, we normally have an exam. After a certain duration, you have to graduate from one class to the other. And that exam is normally a problem that God allows to come into your life. Just to test you, are you capable of the position that I have been organizing for you? Many of us want to be great people. Many of us want to be pastors. Many of us want to be leaders tomorrow. Many of us want to be wife of president, wives of wives of politicians, wife of doctors, wives of lawyers, wives of pastors. But my question to you is, do you have what it takes for you to become a wife of that great person? Do you have what it takes, young man, for you to become that great leader of tomorrow? Hallelujah. You need to put your trust unto God. Sometimes you may have fear. It is allowed for a second. But you need to run unto the cross and tell God, God, I want you to help me. I am at a point where I feel I'm full of fear. God will tell you, I want you to soldier on. I am with you. I have your back. I will help you. When you read the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 5, it says, Before I formed you in, in, in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Verse 10 says, See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. You need to have faith in your maker that the path that he has put you in, there is no turning back. There are mornings you will wake up when you feel like you don't, that you don't want to go to church, but I'm here to tell you, please get yourself out of that bed, take a shower and go to church. There are moments you won't feel like praying. I tell you, child of God, kneel down and start praying. Hallelujah. There are moments you will not feel like giving unto God a sacrifice, an offering, a tithe, and any other financial assistance that he may want you to give to a widow, an orphan, a pastor, a church, an organization. But I'm here to tell you the way Mary told the people at the feast of the wedding of Cana, just do as he tells you. Because without faith, you will not obey God. Without faith, you will not do the thing that God wants you to do because many are the time that God will tell you to do things that appear to be senseless. God will tell you to do things that according to the carnal mind they don't appear to make sense. If you see the story of Abraham he was told that I will make you a father of many nations and and I want you to picture yourself and imagine that you are Abraham following God for around 24 years. Still telling you that I will make you a great nation. I will make you a great nation. I want to believe especially the Christians of today who want blessings immediately. I want a husband now. I want a child now. I want money now. I want employment now. I want this door to be open now. I'm here to tell that God is not a puppet. And that blessings of God are earned. God walked with him through the university of adversity and patience because he was teaching him so many things that he needs to be somebody who has faith. And that is why when you read the book of Hebrews chapter 11, names him as the father of faith because he proved to God that I have followed you for 25 years, even when I did not see that child. But at the end, you kept your word. I'm here to tell you that as you read the book of Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 3, it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. I'm here to tell you that God will give you so many promises. And there are some child of God, I won't promise you that they, that, that they are going to happen immediately, but they are going to take a long time. Some of the promises may take even 20 years. Some of the promises may take 30 years. Because you may not see them in you. You may see them in your children. There are many who have served the Lord as parents for so many years. And they kept on trusting God to open a door to leave them financially so that they even build a house for themselves. And even purchase a piece of land for themselves according to the human standards of stability or financial stability. But God did didn't answer them according to the way they thought. 
God allowed them to live to a point that when their children grew and got jobs, God started blessing their children immeasurably. And these children were able to build these parents a home that they wanted, a car that they needed, clothes to wear that they always wanted. Child of God, God is not working according to your time. But God is working according to his will. And if you don't submit to his will through faith, child of God, you may not be in salvation for too long. You may find yourself heeding to the voice of darkness. You may find yourself heeding to the peer pressure of your friends. You may find yourself heeding to the peer pressure of your relatives. You may find yourself heeding to the peer pressure of your parents. You may find yourself heeding to the peer pressure of the standards of this world. Let me tell you, child of God, God, God works against he goes against he moves against the current of what is trending in this world and if you follow the word of god many a times are going to look foolish Pe people will ask you why are you following this path why don't you follow this other one that appears to be easy why are you waiting upon god why can't you just come up with your way of doing your own things but I'm here to tell you that the bible encourages us from the book of Isaiah where it is encouraging us to wait upon God. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verses 29 to 31. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And, and the young men shall utterly fall. The Bible promises you that if you do not put your faith unto God. And you want to use your youthful mind. To use the carnal mind. God tells you you are going to get weary. You are going to adopt the standards of this world. You are going to follow, oh, oh my God, you are going to follow the words of men. You are going to follow the words of people who do not even know Christ. Oh my God, child of God, why would you want to follow the words of people who do not know even God, but you want to follow their styles. You want to follow how they walk. You want to follow how they do their things. The Bible says in verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint child of God. God promises you that when he has promised you and he has said it's going to take 30 years, you have to wait upon it. God will walk you through it. He will He will renew your strength. He will give you grace. This only happens if you have given your life to Christ totally and to him. The children of Israel died in the wilderness. Those who had come from Egypt, they died because God was angry. He asked them, haven't I shown you my goodness? Haven't I shown you what, what I can do for you? Haven't I blessed you more than any other nation? Haven't I saved you from the slavery, the lifestyle that you used to live when you used to go for clubbing, when you used to drink, when you, when you used to live a party style, when you used to go to the witch doctors, when you, when you used to stay at home on Sundays, when you used to live a life of disobedience, didn't I save you? Didn't I save you from the enslavement of the devil from the pit of hell? Why can't you trust me that I can take you through? Why don't you trust me that I have a pattern? I have a plan for your life and I have spaced your blessings for your own good. I have spaced them according to my own time and in the fullness of time you will live to enjoy those blessings. The devil will lie to you through your friends through what you read on social media and you speak negatively against God and you even curse your life the way that you know if you curse themselves that they that they would rather die in the wilderness and that is what happened to them because the Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 14 verses 28 say unto them as truly as as I live Say the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcass shall fall in the wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein. Save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua the son of Nun. Child of God, sometimes we curse ourselves. We curse our lives. There is 
power in the spoken word. When things become tough, child of God, I would encourage you, read your Bible. Buy a hymn book. Hymns are very powerful. They are, they are undiluted preachings or sermons that by the time you are through singing trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey all you've got to do is to trust in the Lord and God will give you peace as you wait for your blessing don't quit church because you've seen that you have overstayed in a certain problem. Don't come up with ways of doing your own things because you see that you have overstayed in a certain blessing. In Because you've seen that you have overstayed in a certain problem. Many have been jobless for so many years, but God remembered them. Many were barren for so many years, but God remembered them. Many were not married for so many years, but one day God remembered them. Many lived a life of rejection for so many years, but God remembered them. There's no way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Give your life to Jesus if you, ha if you have not given your life to Jesus. And begin this journey of salvation. Put your faith unto God, and God will bless you abundantly. Let us believe and pray. Father, we come before thee today, Lord Jesus. Thank you, my God, for speaking to us, O God. You are a wonderful and a terrible God. We appreciate you because of your power, grace, and might, Lord Jesus, our Father. Thank you for salvation and the journey. We thank you, my God, because you know the future and you know the way. How I pray that, God, you are going to order our steps, O God. Help us to put our trust in you. Help us, O God to obey thee. Help us, O God, to commit our lives, our destiny unto thee, Lord Jesus, O God. Help us, O God, to walk with unwavering faith, O God. Help us, O God, even to pray harder, to go to church more, and to please you more, especially when things are tough, O God. Guide us, O God. Uplift us, King of Kings, O God. Even during this pandemic of Corona, I pray, my God, may you uplift us, O God. May you remember us, King of Kings, O God. Help us to put our trust in thee that, God, we shall, we shall not sleep hungry. We shall not lose in the name of Jesus, O God. People will not lose their jobs in the name of Jesus, O God. And even if they lose, O God, you are going to take care of them as you took as you took care of Elijah at the brook of Cherith in 1 Kings chapter 17, O God, you are going to take care of your children, Lord Jesus, our Father. I pray even for the backslidden, O God. Bring them back to the fold in the name of Jesus. I pray for divine arrest in the name of Jesus, O God. Those that have not given their life unto thee, O God, my master, draw them, O God, to your presence, O God, and arrest them divinely, O God. I pray, believing, everlasting, master, that, that God, you have done it, O Lord, for it is in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Be blessed. God bless you.